Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we have a bevy of game dev news. Well, actually, we have one piece of game dev news, but it's about Bevy. What is Bevy? Bevy is a free and open source Rust-powered game engine for 2D and 3D games. Right now, it is technically a framework, but as we are going to see, there is all kinds of work going on into creating an editor-type experience. So, Bevy, it's again, free open source Rust-based. It is ECS, or Entity Component System Driven, uses a data-oriented approach. It's got 2D and 3D rendering, a full uh, programmable rendering graph, animation support, works on all of these platforms you see right here. There is a UI layer on top of it, a scene system, sound system, hot reloading, and so on and so forth. If you're interested in learning more about it, you can find out at bevy.org. And we're going to jump in today because bevy.017 was just released. Before we get to that, first a quick heads up about two deals going on, which by the way, work with Bevy. Over on Humble, you will find there is the Humble Best of Cinti number five game dev assets bundle going on right now. So if you want to pick up a ton of Cinti content for a very low price, you can do so. The link is available down below. And then on top of that, Cinti themselves also have uh, a site-wide sale going on. So everything across the entire site is available for 30% off, I believe the deal is. Yeah, 30% off the entire site. So if you want to pick up something additional, all kinds of things you can get from Santi, check out the link down below. Both links will help support the channel and I appreciate you using them very much. So today we're talking about Bevy 017. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to come back to the release notes in just a minute. First, a bit of a hands-on demonstration of new features in Bevy. Now the shiniest new feature, the kind of stuff that's easy to show off on a YouTube video around the new experimental ray tracer. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. This is one such example, so let's go ahead and let that do its thing. All right, here we go. So this is a new ray tracing support in Bevy. So you can see you got dynamic lights in the world. Now you're also gonna see there's a lot of noise going on in the scene. That's pretty normal in the world of ray tracing, uh, but I'll show you how you can get rid of that in just a minute. But this is their new demo. They have ray tracing. Uh, again, it's experimental right now, so you're gonna have to give them uh, a little bit of time to, to work out the kinks on this one, but it is looking very, very cool. So that is uh, one of the demos, but we've also got uh, this one, which uses a path tracer. Uh, for the ray tracing. So right here, we're going to run the same thing, but with a path tracer this time. And you're going to see no, uh, no robot running around the scene. And again, you still got the same noise. If you ever worked with uh, like the Cycles render or the EV render or in Blender, you're kind of used to seeing this noising artifact when it comes to a ray traced or a path traced scene, but it gives you more realistic and more accurate lighting in the scene. But obviously, this isn't looking great either. Not quite yet, right? So what we've got now is something called DLSS used for denoising. DLSS is uh, an NVIDIA technology uh, that stands for uh, deep learning super sampling, I believe it is. And let's run this one other way. Now, this is all experimental features, by the way. And you're going to notice I'm adding in DLSS as an option. Getting DLS up and running, by the way, it does have some complications involved in it. Uh, specifically, building on Windows, you do need to add in some, uh, you need to add the Vulkan SDK as well as the DLSS, the, N um, the NVIDIA SDK for DLSS into your system path. So just so you know, those are two aspects of it. But here you can see this is the final form. This is ray tracing with the DLS enabled, so you get rid of that noising, and then suddenly you see something that is actually quite useful. And we turn off the directional lights, so we have just the emissive light coming from our robot. As we see, we go around the world here, or I can go ahead and turn off the emissive light, and then we've got only darkness, but let's go ahead and add our directional light back in, and then once again, return our emissive lights to the scene. So again, this is using DLSS to do the denoising on this example. Now, on the topic of DLSS, there's also a new example here. Again, you do need to build DLSS. That means you have to have those other libraries in your system path. Their documentation mentions nothing about this, by the way, so just be aware of it. But here you can see an example showing all the various different um, anti-aliasing solutions that are available inside of the Bevy game engine. So right now, we've got here, no anti-aliasing. And I don't know how well this is going to show on your computer because of the uh, encoding on my end and then the encoding on YouTube end, and it's very subtle. But look around the edge of the glasses as I switch between. So no anti-aliasing. Uh, this is MSAA, FXAA, SMAA, TAA, and then finally we now have DLSS. And you can see various different options. So we got auto, uh, we got the ultra performance version, performance, balance, oh, sorry, yeah, balanced, quality, and then finally DLAA. And you got a sharpening filter here. You can increase or decrease the sharpening if you wish. 
of the uh, anti-aliasing and you can turn denoising on and off. You can also switch between an orthographic projection or otherwise. Again, it's very subtle unless you're looking at it in person, but we now have this new DLSS um, anti-aliasing option available as well, uh, which is very cool. And then we got another thing, again, this is another experimental feature of Bevy uh, 0.17, and that is Feathers. Now, Feathers is, again, like I said, they're laying the groundwork for the editor, which is coming soon. Uh, the Feathers example is going to show you the UI components that they've created. They don't, okay, so they do scale up a little bit. So you see here, uh, you've got these various different button options. We've also got new options for buttons, headless buttons. Uh, these don't seem to be hooked up in this demo, but you can see the various different features of what you can do uh, for UI layers. This is a new UI layer they've created called Feathers uh, for implementing that. So that's it for the hands-on portion. Let's head on back over uh, to our web browser and the notes for Bevy 0.17. Again, I'm not going to go into all of the details of this. I'm just going to do the TLDR version. So you've got a summary of all of the different uh, features here. If you go down below, uh, you get a ton more um, you know, examples and code examples of everything we're talking about here. Uh, and so here you can see headless bundle, uh, headless buttons in action. So I'm gonna need you to see this one so you understand what they are later on. They're basically a button that has all the logic for a button, but the UI side of things, the, the, the what you display, that is up to the developer. So that is uh, newly added. So let's go through TLDR version of what is in Bevy 0.17. So at the top, we have the new Solari. This is the ray tracing. You saw it, it is an experimental version. Um, so it now has work in progress support for physically realistic, real-time lighting. So there's lots of limitations. You can see the limitations down below in terms of what's not supported yet. Uh, but with the denoising, you find it is actually quite pretty. On top of that, again, this is an entirely data-driven game engine, ECS, and all that stuff. It implements a number of uh, very common programming paradigms. One of them is the observer and event model. So observers have been widely popular, offering users a flexible way to respond to events with very little boilerplate code. Cleaned up the observer and the events API, made them even more flexible and improved their documentation. So observers are very handy in ECS. They, they solve a lot of problems that ECS generates in terms of the logic of how the relationship should be set up in your code. Uh, next up, we have uh, headless Bevy UI widgets. Again, headless means that it provides the functionality and then you do the look and feel on top of that. Um, beyond that, we also have Bevy feathers. That is the new widgets for tooling. Uh, this is not, these are not UI components that are designed to be in games, but inside of tools. Again, leading towards their um, ultimately going to be using them for their editor here. And it's built on top of their headless UI widgets, by the way. So they're actually providing the head at this point in time, I guess you could say. Uh, they also added uh, Rust hot patching. So if you're tired of waiting Rust to compile while prototyping, Bevy now has an initial integration of sub-second by Deoxys, allowing you to opt into hot reload Rust code without restarting your program. It's currently limited to the ECS system and has some limitations. I have trouble trusting hot reload most of the time, to be honest. I've just seen so many bugs from it in so many different game engines, but it can be a massive time saver because you don't have to recompile every time you make a small change. Uh, light textures, you can now use textures to artistically modulate the intensity of a light. Uh, DLSS, uh, Deep Learning Super sampling is now supported on NVIDIA RTX GPUs. Once again, you do need to have that NVIDIA SDK installed and in your path for the build to work, something to be aware of. Um, tile map chunk rendering. So this is on the 2D side of things, a performant way to render tile maps in chunks. Uh, so it's for first step for building out their built-in tile map system. Uh, web assets, this is actually really cool. You can now load assets via HTTP and HTTPS URLs. Um, reflect auto registration. So when reflecting types, you no longer need to manually register them in your app. Reflection is a way of seeing what type um, the type of a variable during runtime, basically. Um, uh, frame time graphs, so new built-in widget to debug frame times in Bevy uh, apps. So this is uh, your FPS counter with like a graph of the previous frames and how they performed. Uh, UI gradients, so it now supports background and border gradients. Ray marched atmosphere, so it's procedural atmosphere now has ray marching mode for more accurate lighting. And then finally, we have virtual geometry, BVH culling. So their virtual geometry system is now much faster thanks to BVH culling. So once again, you can learn more about all of these things and details down below. You got samples of, you know, the new observer system in action and so on. Uh, we also have like a before and after of the DLS. S, so you can see again here on and off. It might show you a little bit better. Again, pay attention around the eyes. That's where it's really obvious. And then on the edges here, DLSS versus no anti-aliasing at all. 
You can really see it in the lenses there. This is a little bit more pronounced than when I ran it live, and I don't know why. They, might have, they may have exaggerated a little bit, but um, cool features there. So that is Bevy 0.19. By the way, if you're interested, and this came all the way back in August. They did an update about a, like a recap of the year in Bevy. Part you might find interesting, though, is more of the next year in Bevy. And you can see kind of like what they are working on, where they're going with things, and the key things. So one of the new things here is this new uh, BSN. And we've got, um, again, a number of things like the widgets and the feather system being built for the editor. There's a lot of comments here basically about the editor. They were building the editor. We're working on this to make the editor. This is about the editor. Hey, this is about the editor as well. And one other thing, I don't know why it didn't make the, um, the mention here. So there's also now this data-driven approach to materials. So there's this new material system that is going to be data-driven that was added in as well. It's going to have a pretty profound effect going forward. I also think it'll make tooling easier to work with. Uh, again, this wasn't even mentioned in the high level. So do make sure if you are using Bevy on a regular case uh, to come through, check the full release notes because there is more than what I am covering here, but I'm already at 11 minutes and I think that is enough time. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Bevy 0.17. If you are interested, uh, very cool project in my opinion. Um, and again, free open source. Once they get that editor online, I think this thing could really boom. Uh, as it stands, when it's a pure framework, it's definitely uh, much more niche in its approach. So it's harder to work Like if you're a, a non-coder. It's not going to be a very accessible engine for you at this point in time. But you can see a lot of the things they're working on are driving towards that end goal. And once again, a quick reminder, uh, the best of Cinti Humble is going on right now. My link is down below. And if you want more Cinti stuff, they are having a 30% off site-wide store. And again, my link is down below. Though. So let me know what you think. Bevy 0.17. You interested? Let me know in the comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.